This episode is brought to you by our best friends at DraftKings Sportsbook. College football is back, and it's time to enjoy the tradition, the fun, and the great offers from DraftKings Sportsbook. To celebrate the best time of the year right now, new customers can bet just $5 on any team and get $200 in free bets instantly, win or lose. If that's not enough, you can also place a same-game parlay for a shot at an even bigger payout. Just combine multiple bets into one, like which team will get the win, which team to score first, and more. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DAN. Bet just $5 on college football and get $200 in free bets instantly. That's code DAN, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for terms and resources. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER in Tennessee. Call or text the Tennessee red line at 1-800-889-9789 in New York. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. One per new customer. Minimum $5 deposit and wager. $200 issued as eight $25 free bets. There is a new competing golf promotion we didn't have enough we have the pga we have live golf and now there is this thing called the tgl which rory mcelroy and tiger woods have announced in conjunction with the pga and we can certainly debate whether or not the in conjunction part of it has anything to do with the (laughs) pga negotiations that happened last week i presume they have a large part to do with it so here is what it essentially is it is 15 regular season Monday night matches followed by semifinals and finals starting in January of 2024. It is six teams of three PGA Tour players, a virtual course complete with a tech-infused short game complex. Every shot is live within a two-hour primetime televised match. That is the basic layout of this new promotion. Tiger Woods and Roy McIlroy are starting a company together, and this is their first big foray. It's in conjunction with the PGA. When I read tech-infused, I thought alcohol. (laughs) <laughs> I've never seen anything that's tech infused, but I saw what Roy, Rory and Tiger are doing. And the first thing I thought of, two things were my immediate reaction. One, wow, the Saudis really did it. <laughs> they got PGA to change. No one could do it. They, they never do anything. And then the second thing is whenever I see, like we didn't talk about Durant in the boardroom and having his logo. I did it on Nothing Personal, so check it out. Yeah. His logo on the press release was the number one thing I've ever seen in my career. Number one. I left. Number freaking one. But- the player empowerment and how the rich get richer. Tiger and Rory starting a company to take advantage. So he turned down a billion dollars from Liv, Mm -hmm. but he has now started a company that is because of what Liv did, and he's gonna make a mint because he's working with the PGA. That's all this is. It's funny because we think about player empowerment, we think about labor versus management, and we don't recognize that yeah, Tiger Woods isn't labor. He is total management, <laughs> and so is Kevin Durant, yeah, like, and so is LeBron James. They all are, right? Yeah. And that's okay. Not they all. The people, there are a select I shouldn't say they all. It's the top tier. But this whole thing with the PGA, could I argue, and I don't want to get canceled for saying how great Saudis are and, and their sovereign fund, but wow, they are helping. Yeah. They are helping golfers who are able to take the high road and say no to live they're benefiting by staying on the PGA because of the higher purses, more events, the 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 tournaments like this, all of which is accruing and inuring to the benefit of their ability to earn money. I think they need to like send a thank you note. Dear Sheik. <laughs> Dear MBS. <laughs> thank you so much. I mean, it's pretty gross though. I mean, it, it's golfers are not exactly a group of people that needed help. Now they've gotten the help. They um, do, though. You're talking about just the top 1%, right? The right. majority of golfers on the tour, they barely make enough to cover their travel expenses. It's funny because... Happy Gilmore barely saves his grandmother's house. Barely. Yeah. And he needed to, like, deal with Barker to do it. And Subway. So, listen, I, I happen to disagree with you on that, right? The, the, like baseball, people think that baseball players are all rich or, or NBA yeah. players. Now, I agree with you there's plenty of John Concacks, but the bottom line is the majority of professional baseball players need another job. Not just minor leaguers, like professional yeah. players who play for two years. They're then 25 years old, having made total career earnings of, now it's going to sound crazy, right? But total career earnings of $600,000. And people say, oh my God, that's so much money. True. But can't live on it forever. You can't. Well, there are people who never get that. And, right. But so, but they, they get jobs. So it's uh, these golfers, the ones who are being helped by Live, 
I think what Tiger and Rory are trying to do and the way you make the most money, the way rich people get richer is by making poor people slightly less poor. But even like, for example, the the PGA also announced that the top players are going to be committing to compete in at least 20 events a season, and the and there will be 12 tournaments that have an elevated purse of 15 to $20 million. Is that, I mean, we're still sort of only helping the top guys. Well, that's for the broadcasting purposes, so that helps everybody, right? right? So you've got to get out. The broadcast partners are saying, listen, we're paying so much money for PGA Tour events, I'm concerned right now that it's going to be club champions who are playing as the final foursome of the day in prime time. So by getting the top players to play, what you're doing is you're keeping the value of your broadcast rights up. It's why the NBA does talks about load management on national TV games. Right. Right. You don't want to screw around when when you're getting that much money. You you have to have your best players playing. But got- D- David, like there, I think we all agree, and golf fans would agree that the PGA model needed to change because they were hoarding a lot of the money and taking advantage of the lower earners, like you said, but I don't think when it comes to live, you got to hand it to them. Like they're not well, doing it for altruistic reasons. No, no, no but, for but sure. It is an Their unintended existence. consequence, perhaps. Uh, oh, interesting. Wait, unintended by the Saudis? To make the PGA better? Oh my God, yes. They could not care less about exactly. the PGA Tour. Yeah, but- so I'm saying like, you don't got to like, you know, oh, we'll give them credit. I was joking, like, dear she, thank you. That okay. was that right, was just a joke. Making sure. Yeah, no, I'm not going to write them a letter. I'm going to do it via Twitter. But I, I thought that it would happen. What if, what if this, what if the, uh, the Saudi Arabians mm-hmm. and the Sovereign Fund? What if they started a new MMA league that forced Dana White to pay more than twenty percent of the revenue to his fighters? <laughs> yeah. What would your view be? You'd say. That, that's actually a really interesting point, David. Um, the PFL, Bellator, all these different promotions are trying to do the same thing, but I just feel like Dana has such a stranglehold on the top fighters in the world. It's not like the top golfers. You have 77 people that are really excellent, right? There's other people in other promotions that are good, but they're ne- they're never going to be as good as the people in UFC. But the other thing is that Bellator doesn't have the financial strength mm-hmm. to be a threat. To, to the UFC. Or oh, honestly, David, you can, you, but though. David, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's more the desire, or I guess the lack of care in losing money. Like the the yes. Saudis can, I've sure. lost they're, hundreds of millions of dollars on this, but they don't care. It's there's a long term play for their them. money. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's also a long term play for them, right? What live? Yeah. No, I don't view it as a long term play. They're not trying to be the PGA Tour. They're just trying to do as many legitimate things as possible to show that they're okay. Right, you don't, you don't, you don't bid for the Olympics, right? Saudi Arabia is trying to get the Olympics. You don't bid for the Olympics because you're going to make money, right? You do it because you're trying to be important. So, a weird version of this is Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona, used to be a for-profit university, right? Uh, people, what they, a they, horror! There was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was listed on the stock exchange. You could buy sh- shares in it. They paid out shareholders all the time, and they were turning profit. It was. Printing money. Surprise right? to use that as an example rather than the University of Phoenix. No, because this is why. Grand Canyon University at some point figured out we'll make more money if we become a quote unquote legitimate university. So they went not for profit. And uh, the first thing they did was we need a sports program. We need athletics because that's going to legitimize us. And that's the difference between them and University of Phoenix. University of Phoenix doesn't have a basketball team. Grand Canyon does. And they went out and hired Dan Marley to be the coach. And now Scott Drew. Uh, Thunder Dan. Uh, yeah. Because Bryce Thunder Drew. Dan lives in the neighborhood? Well, because it, it, it's, it's a long story. But yes. Th- How, does it end with he lives in the neighborhood and no, he'll do it? No, it ends with they paid him a shit ton of money to do it because they're, they they could do that. They could throw money at But if him. he didn't live in the neighborhood, would they have offered it to him? I'm going to die on this him, hill. Him Dan be, Marley taking the Grand Canyon job to me. Seems like a marriage made in heaven. Well, I, look, here's the deal. Like, Dan at the time was an assistant coach with the Suns, and the relationship wasn't great at the time. And so here comes Grand Canyon, which, by the way, they got Jerry Colangelo to kind of be the the unspoken guy, the silent man behind the scenes. And Jerry Colangelo says, hire Dan Marley and pay him one of the highest paying jobs in all of mid-major basketball. And that's how and now one Bryce, of the great jobs in the world is to be Jerry Colangelo or is to work, right? when to you, work for Jerry when Colangelo. you are paid 
to just because of your experience and to give an opinion about something that A, you don't care about, B, you don't care what the ramifications, but you just, hey, who should we hire? What do you think? What do you think about Dan Marley? Well, that'll be $250 for my 10 minutes of thought. And the answer is yes, hire Dan Marley if you pay him a lot. He's more hands-on. He's very hands-on, right? So, but they did all of this because they wanted to be a D1 uh, basketball school and they are D1 now. And How long did it take? Like five years. Good Six plan. Years, the five like year that. plan. But the idea is that they did it all, Chris, not because, hey, um, it's going to start paying dividends immediately. They did it because they said this is going to buy us legitimacy. And I think that's what Saudi Arabia is doing. They're, they're trying to buy legitimacy uh, and say, look, if you if your favorite golfers play here and they like golf and if they, you watch the Olympics and everyone's going to forget – the World Cup coming World up Cup in, in Qatar, in, yeah. yeah, it's but but Qatar. they're buying legitimacy for all their other but business David, reasons. The, the part that I don't understand about this is, I mean, I guess yeah, I, they have money burning a hole in their pocket; they just want to spend it. But I feel like these things only shine a light further on, like, if Qatar did nothing in the world of sports, they would just be a country in the Middle East that I never thought about. Now they're making me think about Qatar, and the first thing that I think of with them and the Saudis point. is. Yeah. It is like all the all the you know human rights violations and the people that Qatar you're not the guy, Chris. Right? They're trying to get people to do business with them. Right? They do billions of dollars of business, and they want people to feel better about doing business with them. Not you to feel to have heard of them or to not have thought about them, and now to think about them, but, or but for that, you to think about it, their human rights violations. They don't care about you or me or any of us. They they they're doing huge billion dollar deals with. But, but they they attract more scrutiny, don't they? As as a result of like these things being out in the public, like there's far more media attention to these countries than a similar country. Like I, I guess the UAE also participates in sports washing uh, through the the City Football Group, but. The UAE doesn't have nearly the attention that Saudi Arabia or Qatar has. There's, I'm trying to remember the one of the owners of the Oklahoma City Thunder was one of the biggest proponents behind Prop 8 in California, which was to ban gay marriage. This is years and years ago. They were trying to influence law in a state that that's not their own, that they have no control over or, or connection to because of their own He ideology. was the religious zealot, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And so... The idea here is, though, being an owner of a sports team, you might say, oh, well, now that opens up to scrutiny. We find out that you're behind a lot of these campaigns. But the reality is the access that they gain far, far overreaches whatever extra scrutiny they get for being in the spot. Have, have you ever talked about Gail Benson on this show? I don't believe we have. Uh, we, 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 we might have mentioned what happened with the, the her, her involvement in the Catholic Church yeah, once or twice. I'm talking but, as owner of the Saints, yeah. her involvement in covering up the pedophilia is well known and major. And uh, so she has football washing, mm -hmm. right? So there are people who do things as a loss leader, if you will to really accomplish other things they're trying. What Saudi Arabia is trying to do, they're not, they really don't care about the live tour, I must say. That's not, they didn't say, hey, I want to start a golf tour. They have much bigger billion dollar business issues in mind. And to them, this is a way, this sovereign fund was sort of developed in order to spend money. It's not, it's sort of like a government. For those of you against public financing, governments, local governments, their job is to spend money on things to make people feel better about the community in which they live. Saudi Arabia's sovereign fund is developed to try to make investments that will make people feel better about doing bigger business with Saudi Arabia. That's always been my take. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. <laughs> uh, start of the day is uh, brought to you by ZipRecruiter, uh, the smartest way to hire. As I tell Michelle, Sasha, Malia, all the time. We welcome in uh, Mike Shore. Very funny guy. Uh, he's in charge of uh, all of our stats here the Levitard Show. Mike, what you got for us? Thank you, Mr. President. According to StatMuse, since 2018, 
the New York Jets have only been favored in 11 games. And the Detroit Lions have been favored in 12. I'm sorry that Stu Gatz isn't here to hear this. Oh, man. 11 games. What? That's out of 65, I guess, right? To be fair, they do get to play the Dolphins twice a year. <laughs> wow. I don't even know which direction that goes. I don't know either. I don't, I don't which know. direction is the, the shit flow? Is it this way or that way? Good that Lord. It's brutal. Yeah. Mike, are They're you watching? a good team. Are you watching Hard Knocks? No, I don't watch Hard Knocks. You don't watch Hard Knocks? Mm-hmm. Are you, you're not? General rule? Yeah. Is this? Yeah. I, 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 I don't want to get too deep in the weeds with this, but I, I moved away from the NFL about six years ago it's too potent a drug for me to quit entirely Mm. so i still watch the game sadly but i try not to support any any fringe aspect of the league so i don't buy any merchandise or apparel from my kids or myself or anybody i don't watch hard knocks i try not to i try not to support any of the ancillary business ventures that the league is involved in the biggest revenue generator for them is the games and you're you're down for that yeah, I got rid of the, it's wild. I got rid of the um, uh, Sunday ticket package. That was my big thing. I was like, was I'm not going to do this anymore. And then they were just like, you can have it for free. <laughs> so I still so I still have it. Because DirecTV, I think, doesn't want people to to give up DirecTV. So they just gave it to me for free. And, and so it, it is like a, it's like a drug dealer going like, hey, have some for free to stick around. And it makes it too hard for me not to watch the games. Um, so I, I shamefully, uh, I dropped, I really, I went in 20, maybe 2018, 2019, I, somewhere in there, I, I actually stopped watching the games. I didn't watch so it. Did I. I, I, yeah. And then well, three years. The, then the pandemic like was so disorienting that I found myself craving something to do on Sundays. And so I was like, well, I'm back in. They brought me back in. N- nestled in the bosom of big football. Like, come here. I can make you feel better. And you just. Let it's just go. too. It's you. You've all talked about it on the show so many times. It's a very. It's a very potent drug. It's impossible not to uh, to be entertained by it. And so, as much as I hate it, I hate the owners. I hate the league. I hate the commissioner. I hate what it does to the players. I hate the way it treats its labor. I hate everything about it. And I still am watching it every Sunday. Very dirty. Feels very it's, dirty. It feels what, very dirty. What now. is that? The dirtiest place? What's the dirtiest? habit that you have that you feel bad about but you still do it's that honestly like i, I, I it's 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 Grow seriously up. is it's the, it's the most to me it's like in terms of my consumption i think it's the most shameful thing that i have in my life is that i can't stop i truly can't give up the nfl and it's not like you know it's not like major league baseball is great it's not like the nba is great right. they're better i think but woof the nfl man it's hard it's hard to justify engaging in that spectator sport. Michelle, what, what's what's that what? place for you? Well, no, I'm just thinking of inappropriate things. Yes, I, I, I know, of. I know. Uh, but <laughs> Your shoe no, habit it, maybe true. would be yeah, out there? No, it, I haven't done it in three years. I do things in threes, uh, give up stuff. But I, I do agree <laughs> with you in that sense. Like you'll have like a Deshaun Watson story come out and then all of a sudden yeah. you just, I don't, you know, I don't ever feel great about it. And, but it, and then it bums me out because as sports fans, this is not when we're supposed to be questioning everything. We're supposed to enjoy being sports fans. It's a hobby. We devote our time to it that we don't have to. And then they make you feel gross and dirty for doing that. So it it's uh, it tugs a little bit sometimes. But I did. I, for three years, I didn't watch a single second of any of it. And it was interesting to yeah. try to figure out something else to do. Well, there was a there was a thing on on Axios recently about the valuation of NFL franchises. And... Like the Jaguars are worth like two and a half billion dollars <laughs> and the Texans are worth four billion. I mean, it's just, and the Texans did never win. Like they can't win anything. No. And yet every year, the valuation of their franchises just rises inexorably like 15 to 20%. And it's because of people like me who just can't stop. It's just like, that's the, essentially like I'm the problem here that they're, that people like the, Nothing will change in the league with ownership, with the league, with the commissioner, with any of the way that they conduct their business, unless people truly stop engaging in the product. Oh. And I just can't. It's really bad. It makes me feel bad about myself. Junkies, the lot of you. Thanks a yeah. lot, Mike. <laughs> Anytime. Talk to you tomorrow. Sure. Sure. 